Afternoon is, ah, sorry, will be by Nina Holden. She's a graduate student in mathematics at MIT and is a true polymath. Uh, her work ranges from conformally, conformally invariant probability to graph limits to partial differential equations. Uh, on a personal note, I should comment that I first heard about her work as uh, referenced in discussions on a project I was working on as, uh, oh, Nina Holden has a paper on that with, with some other co-authors, I don't remember who. Um, and then later went and looked up the paper and discovered that the co-authors were, you know, all senior scholars whom I'd be honored to have collaborated with, much less been the one that was remembered as the, the salient instance. Um, so we're very excited to hear her speak about sparse exchangeable graphs and their limits. Uh, okay, uh, first I would like to say thanks very much for the invitation to speak uh, and thanks very much for the introduction. I'm sure the paper is normally not uh, introduced in that way. Um, so I will speak today about a joint work with uh, Christian Borgs, uh, Jennifer Treyes and uh, Henry Kuhn. Um, so, um, uh, so there are a lot of uh, large networks uh, everywhere in the world uh, in uh, technology, uh, economics, uh, biology, social settings, uh, and so on. Uh, and this talk is about uh, the modeling um, and study of, of large networks. Uh, so we're interested in, in comparing large networks. Uh, so if you see these three networks uh, shown on the slide, uh, which two of those uh, are mo most similar? Uh, if we are given two large graphs, um, how can we quantify uh, how different they are? Um, and, and which properties of the graphs uh, should we look at in order to answer these questions? And we're also interested in uh, convergence of graphs. Uh, if we're given uh, a sequence of real numbers, uh, we all know what it means uh, that the sequence is uh, converging. Um, but in the setting of graphs, uh, it's less clear what it means um, that the sequence of graphs uh, is converging. Uh, and finally, we're interested in, uh, in the modeling of, uh, of networks. Uh, so let's say we want to model uh, a social network. Um, what is the best uh, model we can use? Um, and, um, uh, and what pro properties of the networks uh, do we want uh, the graphs to have? As we will see uh, in this talk, uh, how we can approach uh, these questions by using graphons. Uh, so graphons are uh, symmetric uh, interval functions, uh, which are defined on the product of some uh, measure space uh, with itself. Uh, a graphon um, uh, uh, can, can be used to generate uh, random graphs, uh, so a graphon uh, may be used, um, uh, may, be, uh, may be viewed as, as a model for a random graph. Uh, graphons uh, can also be used uh, to study convergence of, uh, of graphs. Uh, if we have, um, if we have uh, a convergence sequence of, uh, um, of real numbers, um, then uh, the limit of the sequence uh, is a real number. Uh, if we have a convergence sequence of graphs, uh, then the limit uh, is a graphon. As so we will study the case of, uh, of dense graphs and uh, sparse graphs uh, separately. As uh, so if we are given a graph G, uh, then we define the edge density of the graph uh, to be two times the number of edges divided by the number of vertices squared. Uh, this is equal to the average degree of the graph uh, divided by the number of uh, vertices, and it is a number between zero and one. Uh, and we say that the sequence of graphs uh, is dense um, if uh, the density of the graph uh, is bounded away from zero uh, when n goes to infinity. And we say that the sequence of graphs is sparse uh, if the density is converting to zero when n goes to infinity. Uh, and when we uh, will study sparse graphs uh, later, we will mainly be discussing graphs uh, which have uh, a divergent uh, average degree. Uh, so what does it mean for, uh, for a sequence of graphs to converge? Um, so I will give one possible definition now, um, in, uh, which we call um, metric convergence, uh, and this uh, notion of convergence can be used for dense graphs. Uh, so the idea of uh, metric convergence is that um, an, a graph G uh, can be associated uh, with a graph on uh, WG. Uh, WG is defined uh, in uh, the unit square. Um, it takes values 0 and 1, uh, and it represents uh, the adjacency matrix uh, of the graph. Uh, you can see some examples on, on the figure. Um, first, you can see the example of, uh, of the half graph, uh, and then you can see the example of uh, an erdos renner graph with a parameter 1 half. Um, and uh, and on, on the right part of the figure, uh, you can see uh, the graphons associated with the graph, uh, and on uh, these figures, uh, one um, is represented by black and zero is represented by white. 
uh, and then we ask uh, if there is any way in which, uh, in which these functions uh, converge. Um, in the case of the half graph, uh, the obvious candidate uh, is the function uh, shown on, on the right. Uh, in the case of the erdos renner graph, uh, one natural candidate is the function which is equal to um, one half everywhere. Uh, and we say that uh, a sequence of, um, of graphs uh, is converging if the associated sequence of, of graphons uh, is converging for some appropriate uh, permutation or uh, labeling of, of the vertices. Uh, since uh, if we are given a graph, we may associate it uh, to several different graphons because there are several ways to uh, enumerate or uh, label uh, the vertices. Uh, you can see one example of that um, at, at the lower part of the figure. Um, where we can see uh, where you can see two graphons, um, which uh, which are both both representing the complete bipartite graph. Uh, you can see some further examples on uh, on this slide. Uh, on the top, you can see a randomly grown uh, uniform attachment graph. Um, so uh, so th uh, these random graphs are def uh, defined by adding um, vertices to the graph uh, one by one. And when we add uh, the nth vertex to the graph, uh, we look at all the, uh, all the pairs of vertices in, in the graph which are not currently connected. And when we add vertex n, then we connect uh, each pair of such vertices uh, with probability 1 over n. Uh, on the lower part of the figure, uh, you can see uh, random graphs uh, grown by uh, preferential attachment. <coughs> Um, uh, this model is defined by first choosing um, a natural number n uh, corresponding to the number of vertices, uh, a natural number m uh, corresponding to the number of, of edges, uh, and then the graph um, is generated by first uh, starting out with, um, uh, with n uh, isolated vertices, and then we add the m edges uh, one by one. Uh, and uh, every time we add, um, we add an edge, the probability of connecting two particular uh, vertices uh, is given as a function of, um, of the current uh, degree of, um, of the vertices. Uh, so now I, I will make uh, the metric graph convergence, um, um, or I, I will define it more formally. Uh, so uh, a graph on over 0, 1 uh, is a symmetric function which is defined on uh, the unit square uh, and takes values between 0 and 1. Um, if we are given a function um, on the unit square, uh, we define its norm uh, by taking integrals over rectangles s times t. Uh, and we choose um, s and t such that, uh, such that uh, the norm of, uh, of the integral is, um, is maximized. Uh, if we are given two graphons uh, w1 and w2, we define their distance uh, by taking uh, the norm of, um, of their difference. Um, but remember from previously that we uh, consider two graphons to be uh, equivalent uh, if they correspond to the same uh, graph. Uh, and therefore, uh, before taking uh, the norm of the difference of the graphs, uh, we are allowed to, to transform, uh, transform one of, of uh, the graphons by a measure-preserving transformation, phi. Uh, and this uh, measure-preserving transformation is corresponding to doing a permutation of uh, the vertices. Uh, and we say that uh, Wn is converging to W uh, if uh, the cut distance between Wn and W is going to zero. Uh, similarly, a sequence of graphs is defined to be convergent uh, if the associated uh, graphons converge. Uh, you can see one example um, on, on the figure. Uh, symmetric convergence is, uh, is not the only way to define convergence of, uh, of graphs. Um, it's also possible to look at a convergence of uh, subgraph uh, frequencies. Um, so we imagine that f uh, is some uh, fixed graph, uh, and we look at maps phi from the vertices of f uh, to the vertices of gn, uh, and we require that if two vertices are connected in f, then they are also connected in gn. Um, and then we look at, um, at the number of, uh, of such maps, um, and we say that uh, the graph has convergent subgraph frequencies uh, if the normalized number of, of such maps um, is converging um, for, any, uh, for any graph uh, f. Um, another way to define convergence is to look at, um, at convergence of uh, free energies of statistical physics models uh, on the graph. Uh, one fourth way to define convergence is the convergence of quotients. Uh, this is a notion of convergence which is uh, capturing, for example, um, the size of the maximal cut or uh, the minimal bisection. Uh, 
Uh, one fifth possibility is to look at uh, large deviation properties of, uh, of the graph. Um, in this case, we, we color the vertices of the graph uh, with a fixed number of colors uniformly at random, and then we look at the probability of having a particularly large or small uh, number of uh, edges connecting vertices of, uh, of given colors. Uh, and then in the setting of, uh, of dense graphs, uh, all of the above, above notions of uh, convergence uh, are uh, equivalent. So it means that if a sequence of graphs is converging um, in metric, then it also converges in, in the four other ways. Um, and the limiting properties of, of the graphs uh, for the four uh, last notions of convergence can be expressed in terms of, uh, of the limiting graph on. Um, for example, in the case of uh, subgraph um, frequency convergence, uh, then uh, the number of, uh, of maps uh, phi uh, is converging to um, an, uh, is converging to, to an explicit uh, function of uh, of W. Um, so we have seen that graphons can be used to model, um, uh, can be used to study convergence of, of dense graphs, and we will now see how uh, graphons can be used uh, to model uh, dense graphs. So we'll let a W be a graphon defined on the unit square and taking values between 0 and 1. Then we'll let x2, uh, x1, x2, and so on be sampled uniformly and independently from uh, the unit interval. Uh, and xi is representing uh, the properties or features of uh, vertex number i. Uh, for each n, uh, we'll let gn uh, be a graph uh, such that vertex i and vertex j uh, are connected with the probability w of x i comma x j. Uh, and several uh, models for random graphs uh, rise as uh, special cases of, of the above model. For example, an erdos rainer graph corresponds to having a constant graph on, uh, and a stochastic block model uh, corresponds to having a graph on which is constant on rectangles. Uh, and then if we generate the sequence of graphs Gn in, in this way, uh, then it will converge to the limiting graph on in, um, in the cut metric as n goes to infinity. Um, and then we ask, uh, what is a good stochastic model for uh, large networks? Um, so we'll let Gn uh, be a sequence of growing graphs such that Gn has uh, n uh, vertices. Um, and then um, two natural properties which we may want uh, the graph uh, the graph to satisfy is projectivity and uh, exchangeability. Uh, projectivity means that if m is smaller than n, then gm is an induced subgraph of gn. Uh, and exchangeability means that uh, the law of gn is invariant under uh, a permutation of, uh, of the vertices. Uh, so exchangeability means that there is no systematic difference in the properties of vertices added early and vertices added uh, later to the graph. Um, and then uh, it's not uh, hard to verify that uh, the random uh, graphs uh, defined on the previous slide uh, are both projective and uh, exchangeable. Uh, but the converse result um, is also true. Uh, Aldous and Hoover proved uh, around uh, 1980 um, that if we have a sequence of graphs which are projective and exchangeable, uh, then there is a possibly random uh, graph on W such that the sequence of graphs uh, was generated from W. Uh, so, so far we have seen that, um, uh, seen that uh, graphons can be used uh, both when studying convergence and when generating um, uh, dense graphs. Uh, but what can we say in the setting of, of sparse graphs? Uh, if we have a sequence of uh, sparse graphs, uh, then they will always converge to the trivial graphon, uh, meaning the graphon which is uh, identically equal to zero. Um, and we are also interested in generating uh, sparse random graphs. Uh, and again, we're interested in the graphs which are um, both projective uh, and exchangeable. Uh, but by the aldous schroeder theorem, uh, any sequence of projective and exchangeable graphs uh, was generated from um, a graphon, so it is uh, necessarily dense. Uh, so the question is, um, is it possible to develop uh, an analogous theory of graph convergence and exchangeable random graphs um, uh, in, in the setting of sparse graphs? Uh, and we will look at some possible answers to this question in uh, the remainder of the talk. Um, so if we have a sequence of sparse graphs, it's converging to the trivial graphon. Uh, but there are two ways we can renormalize uh, the graphons to prevent this from happening. Uh, so one way is that we can uh, rescale the height of the graphon. Uh, that's illustrated in, in the middle figure. Um, uh, and, and we say that this graphon is a rescaled version of the original graphon. Uh, a second way to renormalize uh, the graphon is to rescale uh, the input arguments of, of the graphon. 
uh, and this is illustrated on uh, the right figure, and we call uh, the graphon a stretched version of uh, the original graphon. Um, and then we say that a sequence of graphs uh, is converging in uh, the rescale cut metric if uh, the rescale graphons converge, uh, and similarly we define a stretched uh, cut metric convergence. Uh, so previously we were looking at graphons defined on the unit square, taking values between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, the rescaled graphons um, uh, do not anymore take values between uh, 0 and 1, uh, but they can take any non-negative real value. Uh, and the stretched graphons are not anymore defined on the unit square, uh, but, um, but they are defined on, on subsets of, um, of the first quadrant. Uh, so therefore, uh, we introduce uh, a generalized definition of a graphon. Uh, so we say that a graphon uh, is a symmetric integrable function, uh, which, is, which is defined on uh, the product of uh, some measure space uh, with itself, uh, and it can take any uh, real value. Um, so um, uh, the two graphons, WR and WS, uh, which are rescaled and stretched, they are, also, they are always renormalized such that uh, the integral of, uh, of the graphon is equal to 1. Uh, and therefore, we also require uh, the graphons uh, to be. Um, uh, we also require a graphon to be integrable. Uh, and then we generalize the definition of the cut metric, um, so it can treat uh, these uh, generalized graphons. Uh, in the case of atomless Borel spaces, the definition is identical uh, as before. Um, but we we also define uh, the cut metric in the case where uh, the underlying measure spaces are general sigma finite uh, measure spaces. Uh, and then we define this uh, rescaled and a stretched uh, cut metric uh, by rescaling or stretching the graphons before uh, we evaluate uh, the distance. Um, so, um, uh, so the rescaled and stretched cut metric can be used to study uh, convergence of some sparse graphs, but not all sparse graphs can be, uh, can be studied using uh, th these notions of convergence. Uh, so they are most appropriate for studying graphs with unbounded average degree, uh, since if a sequence of graphs converge for um, these two metrics, uh, then the average degree is necessarily unbounded. Um, if a sequence of graphs uh, converge for uh, delta r, uh, then it also satisfies a property um, which is called uniform upper regularity. Um, so if we have a sequence of graphs uh, which converge, um, uh, which converge to, um, to a graph on, uh, in the setting of, of dense graphs, uh, then the edge density is typically inhomogeneous, uh, except in the special case where the graph on is constant. Um, when we look at graphs converging for uh, the rescale cut metric, um, uh, then the graphs can have a more inhomogeneous edge density uh, because the limiting graphon uh, is allowed to be uh, unbounded uh, and the unbounded parts um, of the graphon corresponds to uh, subgraphs which are particularly dense. Uh, but still, uh, there is an upper bound on how uh, inhomogeneous the edge density can be uh, and uniform upper regularity um, is, um, is, is a precise um, is, is, is defining precisely uh, how inhomogeneous uh, the edge density can be. Um, uh, and then if we have a sequence of graphs converging for uh, the stretched uh, cut metric, then it satisfies a property we call uh, uniform uh, regularity of tails. Uh, and this uh, property, um, uh, as a contrast to uh, upper regularity, uh, means that uh, the edge density necessarily is, is very uh, inhomogeneous. Uh, so if we have a sequence of graphs converging for uh, delta S, then the, there has to be particular subgraphs with a much higher edge density than the rest of, of the graph, uh, if, if the graph is sparse. Uh, and you can see on the figure some examples of, of graphs uh, which uh, converge for uh, the rescale, link, uh, rescale cut metric and uh, the stretched uh, cut metric. Um, and there is also um, a converse result of the result in the two uh, last bullet points. Uh, if we consider a sequence of graphs, uh, which is uniformly upper regular, uh, then we know that it uh, converges subsequentially towards a graphon. Uh, and there is a similar uh, result in the setting of uniform regularity of tails and uh, the stretched uh, cut metric. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, uniform upper regularity and uniform regularity of tails are the precise property which characterize uh, which graphs which can be studied with uh, with this notion of, um, of convergence. Um, 
Um, so if we're given uh, any sequence of graphs, a GN, uh, and it is dense, and it converges for uh, the cut metric delta, uh, then it also converges for delta R and delta S. Um, uh, so this means that uh, dense graph convergence is covered as a special case of convergence for delta R and uh, delta S. Uh, and conversely, um, if the sequence of graphs is converging for both, both delta R and delta S, uh, then um, it is dense and it also converges for, for delta. Uh, so only dense graphs uh, are covered by both the new, uh, both the new um, theories of convergence for sparse graphs. Um, it's also possible to unify the two notions of, uh, of convergence. Uh, and then we get the notion of convergence which is covering uh, all the graphs discussed above. Um, but uh, the metrics delta R, delta S, and delta are still interesting uh, because uh, these notions of convergence are stronger uh, than, uh, than convergence for the new um, metric delta M. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and, and these treat, um, and, and the treat three metrics delta R, delta S, and delta is treating particular subclasses of graphs uh, which have properties that are <laughs> particularly natu natural or, um, or interesting. Um, so as mentioned previously, metric convergence is not the only way um, a sequence of graphs can converge. Uh, and in the setting of, of dense graphs, um, uh, there were uh, several different notions of convergence which were all equivalent. Uh, and there are similar results in the setting of uh, sparse graphs. Uh, so if we have, um, so if we first consider uh, the case of uniformly upper regularity um, of graphs, uh, then uh, we first need to define um, what it means uh, that, uh, that such a sequence of graphs has convergent free energies, convergent quotients, and is uh, large deviation convergent. Uh, and the definitions which are used for uniformly upper regular graphs are the exact same as for dense graphs, except that there is a different renormalization which takes into account uh, the density of, of the considered graph. Uh, and, and in this setting, um, uh, we have the same result as in the dense setting, that all the different notions of convergence are equivalent. Uh, and there is also uh, a similar result in the setting of, um, of graphs with uh, regular tails. Um, also in this setting, uh, we define some new variants of the alternative notions of convergence. Uh, in this case, we consider uh, induced subgraphs. Uh, and also in this setting, uh, all the no different notions of convergence are, are equivalent. Um, so uh, in, in the setting of dense graphs, uh, convergence of subgraph counts uh, was, also was also equivalent to all the other notions of convergence, uh, but that is the one notion of convergence uh, which is not equivalent in, um, uh, in the sparse case. Uh, so next, uh, I want to define uh, some random uh, graph models for sparse graphs uh, by using uh, the new definition of, uh, of a graphon. Um, uh, so we let W be a graphon uh, defined on the unit square, uh, but um, but we let the graphon um, we allow the graphon to take any uh, non-negative uh, value. Uh, then then we let row n be a sequence of real <coughs> numbers uh, converging to zero, slower than one over n. Uh, then we let x1, x2, and so on be independent uniform random variables from the unit interval. Uh, and then for each n, we let g n be a graph such that vertices i and j are connected with probability given by rho n uh, times w of x i um, x j uh, if this is, uh, is between 0 and 1. Uh, on the figure, uh, you can see an example of random graphs which are uh, generated this way. Uh, it is possible uh, to couple together the different graphs g n so that we get from g n to g uh, n plus 1 uh, by adding uh, a single vertex, uh, adding edges between this vertex and, uh, and other vertices, uh, and also removing uh, some edges. Uh, you can see an example of this when we go from uh, G3 to G4, uh, where we remove the vertex between, um, we remove the edge between vertices one and two. Um, here you can see um, the same uh, sequence of uh, growing graphs. Here you can see G5, um, G6, and G7. Uh, and again, uh, we remove um, an, an edge between vertices 2 and 5 uh, in, in the very last step. Uh, so now I will define uh, a new um, model for, for sparse graphs. Uh, in this setting, uh, we let the graphon be defined in the first quadrant, uh, but we require it to take values between 0 and 1, uh, as in uh, the dense case. Uh, so the first step um, of, of generating this graph is to sample a Poisson point process uh, in the first quadrant. Uh, 
Uh, so the Poisson point process consists of points um, x i t i, and each point is corresponding to a vertex of the graph such that t i uh, is the birth time of the vertex and x i is uh, the feature of the vertex. Uh, and then for each uh, t bigger than zero, uh, we let a g tilde t uh, be a graph such that uh, the vertex set is given by the vertices with a birth time uh, smaller than or equal to t. <coughs> Uh, and then for any pair of, um, of vertices, uh, we define, uh, we connect them with a probability given by W of X, I, X, J, where X, I and X, J are the features of the vertices. Um, and then, uh, so this graph, uh, G, T, tilde, uh, will be an infinite graph uh, for each T. Uh, and the reason is that for any horizontal line uh, in the first quadrant, there will be infinitely many points uh, below it. Um, and... Uh, um, but we also required that the graph on W was integrable, uh, and this will imply that the number of edges uh, of GT tilde is, um, is finite. Uh, so we can get um, a finite graph from GT tilde by removing all vertices with uh, degree zero. Uh, a special case of this model was introduced first by Karen and Fox, and uh, later uh, the variant um, presented above was, uh, was introduced independently in uh, into different papers. Um, yeah, so to understand uh, better this uh, this new random graph model, uh, I have compared it to the case of generating dense graphs. Uh, so in the dense setting, we have a graph on defined on the unit square with values between zero and one, and we get the graph Gn by generating n uh, points uh, from the unit interval uh, and connecting them with the probability given by W. Uh, in the new setting, uh, we consider a graph on in the first quadrant. Um, if you want to sample a graph with the same marginal law as GT, uh, we first sample a Poisson point process with intensity T uh, on the positive real line. Uh, the points of the point process um, correspond to vertices in the infinite graph uh, GT tilde. Uh, and then for any point, uh, any pair of uh, vertices, we connect them with a probability uh, which is given by the graph on W. Um, uh, and there will be um, infinitely many uh, isolated uh, vertices in the resulting graph, for example, uh, the vertex uh, shown in, in blue. Uh, and in order to get the finite graph GT, uh, we remove uh, all these uh, isolated vertices. Um, so next I will give some uh, remarks about, um, about these uh, new uh, sparse random graphs. Uh, so my, my first remark is that uh, both of the new models for sparse random graphs, uh, they are convergent in metric. Uh, the graphs defined by rescaling uh, the edge density uh, to converge for the rescale cut metric, and the graphs generated from graphon, graphons over R+, plus, uh, they converge for the stretched cut metric. Uh, my second remark is that uh, dense graphs uh, arise as a special case uh, of the above models. Um, so in, uh, in the case of the graphs with rescale density, we can set uh, the density uh, rho n identically equal to 1. Uh, in the case of uh, graphons uh, over R+, plus, uh, we can choose graphons which are uh, supported in, um, in a compact set, for example, uh, the unit square. Uh, and we can also combine the two models uh, by both considering graphons over R+, plus and rescaling the density. Um, and... Um, uh, so, so both of these two gra uh, random graph models um, satisfy some notion of uh, exchangeability. Uh, the graphs with uh, rescale density, uh, they are uh, exchangeable in the sense that for each n, uh, the law of uh, the graph is invariant under permutation of the vertices. Um, the graphs generated from graphons over R plus uh, are also exchangeable if we consider um, a generalized notion of uh, exchangeability. Uh, and with this uh, generalized notion of exchangeability, uh, we consider uh, the birth time of the vertices instead of the time uh, at which the vertices were added to the graph. Uh, so in order to dis explain this, um, this second notion of exchangeability better, uh, I will go back to looking at, uh, at how the random graphs are generated. Uh, so remember that the random graphs were generated by first um, uh, by first getting an infinite graph GT tilde, uh, and then uh, getting a finite graph GT by removing all isolated vertices. So therefore we can look at how uh, GT uh, is growing by looking at how edges are added uh, to um, GT tilde. Uh, for each edge of the graph, uh, we associate it with a point uh, T1, T2, uh, 
um, and uh, and we uh, and we make a point process uh, in the first uh, quadrant con consisting of, of all the edges um, of the graph. Uh, and then uh, watching the graph grow is corresponding to exploring uh, more and more of the first quadrant. Uh, since an edge uh, is included in GT, uh, if and only if, um, the birth time of, of both the vertices um, is smaller than or equal to T. Um, so here you can see the graphs when uh, two uh, edges are added, here three edges are added, and four edges are added. Um, and then uh, if we have um, growing graphs, uh, GT, um, and we define uh, a measure in, in the first quadrant in, in this way, uh, then we define uh, a graph to be exchangeable if uh, this point process in uh, the first quadrant um, uh, is invariant in law under permutation of the intervals. Uh, so this means that uh, if we are given uh, two intervals uh, of similar length, uh, for example, the interval in uh, blue and red, uh, and then we uh, we swap them uh, and, and the associated edges. Uh, then we require the resulting uh, point process uh, to have the same law as uh, the original point process. Um, so I have I have two remarks about this um, this generalized notion of exchangeability. Uh, so the first remark is that uh, this notion of exchangeability um, is uh, generalizing uh, the notion of exchangeability, uh, which I defined earlier. Uh, if we are given uh, a sequence of graphs, um, a GN, uh, then it, it is possible to, um, uh, to, to make a point process in, um, in the first quadrant uh, by looking at when the edges appear, uh, appeared in the graph. Um, and if the original sequence uh, was um, exchangeable, then, uh, then it will also be exchangeable in, in this, with this new uh, definition. Uh, and my second remark is that uh, this notion of exchangeability has a similar uh, interpretation as uh, the other definition. Uh, so you remember that uh, in the other definition, um, uh, exchangeability meant that there is no systematic difference between uh, vertices added early and vertices added late to the graph. Uh, so we can say that the growth of the graph is uh, homogeneous in time. Um, and we have a similar interpretation in this setting uh, if we look at uh, the birth time uh, of the vertices. Uh, so this notion of exchangeability means that um, it means that uh, the birth uh, the vertices are homogeneous if we look at uh, the time at which they were born. Uh, so we recall the Aldo Schuver theorem. Uh, it is saying that if we have a sequence of graphs a GN, uh, then it is projective and exchangeable if and only if it was generated from a possibly random graphon. Um, and we have a similar uh, characterization in, in this setting. Uh, if we look at uh, the random graphs GT generated from a graphon over uh, R+, plus, uh, then it's not hard to check uh, that they satisfy uh, this generalized notion of exchangeability, and they are also projective and they have uh, regular tails. Uh, but the converse result is also true. Um, if we have a sequence of graphs which are projective, generalized, exchangeable, and have uniformly regular tails, then they must have been generated from a possibly random graphon uh, over the first quadrant. Uh, so this slide is uh, summing up some properties of, um, of graphs generated with uh, the two models for sparse graphs. Uh, so we have seen that both, um, both of the graphs satisfy some notion of exchangeability. Uh, graphs with rescale densities are uh, not projective uh, since, we, um, since we may remove uh, edges over time. Um, but uh, graphs generated from graphons over R+, uh, they are projective. Um, uh, so the, the reason uh, graphs with the rescale densities are uh, sparse is because we remove edges over time. Uh, the reason graphons, graphs generated from graphons over R plus are sparse is because vertices added later typically have a lower degree than vertices added early. So remember that uh, the vertices, which, which uh, if we look at the birth process of the vertices, this is homogeneous in time, uh, but vertices which have, um, uh, have a low degree, uh, they are typically added to the graph um, uh, very much later than they were born. Um, graphs with uh, rescale densities are uh, upper regular, uh, while graphons over R plus have regular tails. Uh, and these regularity properties are closely re related to the degree distribution of, of the graph. Uh, 
Um, if we look at graphs with uh, rescale density, um, then and if we sample uh, a vertex uh, uniformly at random from the graph and we look at the degree, then the degree of the vertex is typically of uh, approximately the same order as uh, the average degree of, of the graph. Um, then if we do the same uh, for, a graph on, for a graph generated from a graph on uh, over R plus, um, then we can get um, then uh, the law of, of the degree of the sample graph. Uh, it may converge in law uh, even without any uh, renormalization. Uh, so this means that we, uh, in particular, that we may uh, that we can get uh, graphs with um, uh, with power law uh, degree distribution. Um, and then I want to say uh, some words about uh, equivalence of graphons. Um, so remember that uh, with a generalized definition of the graphon, it can be defined uh, with any uh, underlying space um, S. Um, and so far we have looked at the case of S being the unit interval and, um, uh, and the positive real line. Um, but for certain applications, there may be other uh, underlying spaces which are more natural. For example, um, we can let S be a finite set. Uh, this corresponds to having a stochastic block model. Uh, or we can let S be some, um, uh, be some higher dimensional space. Um, and, and in this case, um, if, when S is some higher dimensional space, uh, then each, uh, the feature of each, each vertex uh, is, uh, is a vector, uh, in this case with dimension D. Uh, such that each um, each element of the vector uh, is uh, is giving um, is, is describing some particular property of, of the vertex. For example, if we're modeling uh, a social uh, network where the vertices are are people and the edges uh, indicate if they know each other, uh, then we can, for example, let the first coordinate uh, describe uh, the age of a person. We can let uh, the second coordinate say something about their interests. We can let the third coordinate coordinate represent their income. And then the function w uh, is saying uh, that if we are given n the two vectors, uh, the function w is saying how, how likely it is that people with those vectors uh, know each other. Uh, we can also let s be the product of a finite set and uh, the positive real line, where, for example, the coordinate corresponding to the positive real line is saying something about um, how, how likely, uh, how uh, social the vertex is, so how likely it is to connect to other vertices in, um, in general. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, so then uh, there is a result which says that um, if we view two graphons uh, as equivalent, if they have cut distance zero, um, then, uh, then it, it is sufficient to study graphons only defined over R+. Plus. Um, so more precisely, if we're given a graph on W uh, with some underlying measure space S, uh, then there exists a graph on W tilde uh, with underlying space R plus, uh, such that they have uh, cut distance zero. Um, and, uh, and the next result uh, is that um, if we let W1 and W2 be two graphons and we look at, uh, at the corresponding uh, random graphs, uh, then the random graphs are equal in law uh, if and only if uh, the graphons have uh, cut distance uh, zero. Um, and then I mentioned earlier that if we look at, um, at graphs which are generated, uh, that if we look at sparse graphs, uh, then convergence of subgraph counts um, is, uh, is not equivalent to metric convergence. Uh, but if we look at graphs which are generated from a graphon, uh, then, uh, then we do have a convergence of subgraph counts. Uh, so we let GT uh, be generated from a graphon uh, over R plus. Um, and then uh, for any uh, simple connected graph F, uh, we look at the normalized number of, um, of graph uh, homomorphisms from F uh, into GT. Uh, and then um, if uh, GT was generated from, from W, uh, then we can say that this normalized number of uh, graph homomorphisms is converging almost surely as uh, T goes to infinity. Uh, this is under uh, certain conditions on, uh, on the graph on uh, W. Okay, I think that was it. <laughs>